Commander Cody. The time has come. Execute order 69. <coughs> <coughs> Welcome everybody to another edition of Hell and High Tales, the edgiest and gayest podcast on the interweb, slowly, anally, fisting our way into your fleshy hearts. I am your host, Flashy J.W. Evans from the heavens, and I am joined by my chubby buddy, Willie D. Will, Yo! how you fucking doing? <laughs> well, I'm doing fucking, well, what have you I'm been doing. up to? Have you ridden any bears lately, Will? Will, have you ridden any bears? Are we talking as in the animal any... or the gay men? Either way, no, but I wish. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you have you fought any lions? Punched any tigers? Like the belly button? What does a tiger's belly button look like, Will? Do tigers have tigers even have belly button? Uh, do tigers have belly buttons? I, I mean, Dude, does. Do I mean, all mammals mammal. have belly buttons, or is all, that like a human I think, thing? I think all mammal. I'd assume all mam. I think all mammals have belly buttons. I think they do. I never thought about it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> do tigers have belly buttons? Will. I went to court yesterday. Oh shit! Was it about tigers having belly buttons? <laughs> no, because I punched a kid. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> it's high school all over again. <laughs> fuck. But not actually though. It was just some good ticket. Oh, okay, fucking just, just, just bullshit. some bullshit. Nothing cool like fucking punching a tiger in the belly button that it may or may not have. <laughs> <laughs> tiger belly button. Hold on, Will. Talk about some shit. I'm a Google. Do tigers have belly buttons? Oh, fuck. I was about to Google it. Um, <laughs> well, did you know that it, for a chicken to lay eggs, it does not have to be fucked by a rooster? Chickens apparently just naturally lay eggs. Oh. This is a fact I didn't know until like a month ago. I didn't know that until now. They just won't hatch. Okay. Okay. According to the News and Observer, uh, you will not find belly buttons on animals like birds or reptiles, but you will find them on most, but not all mammals. However, belly buttons on squirrels, tigers, and even whales aren't as noticeable on the belly buttons you will find on other animals. Okay, so tigers do have belly buttons. They are just not very noticeable. And I was so actually just about to ask if whales had belly buttons. <laughs> fucking... The yeah, yeah, platypus so... have belly buttons. Yeah, okay. Because a platypus is the only mammal to lay eggs. Does a pla... I mean, why would it have a belly button if it lays eggs? I don't know. A belly button. Why is it still up... a mammal if it lays eggs? Be- a-, a fucking belly buttons from where the fucking umbilical cord was. Look, a platypus is fucking weird. All right, maybe it starts off with an umbilical cord and then lays an egg. I don't I- know. I'll Google it anyway. Does... Dude, somebody Googled. Okay, there's. <laughs> okay, let me read. This is funny. Will let me read the fucking top three search results for does a platypus. Number one, does a platypus lay eggs? Number two, does a platypus have a belly button? How convenient. A lot of other people are stupid. Mm. Uh, and number three, <laughs> does a platypus have a stomach? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Googling if a platypus has a fucking stomach? <laughs> Apparently a lot of people. Yeah, I guess. Okay, uh, platypuses and uh, marsupials do not have belly buttons. Are marsupials considered mammals? Marsupials are mammals, but their umbilical cords usually fall off while they're in their mother's pouch, so a scar never forms. I just realized the belly button is just a fucking medical scar. Holy shit, that's gross. <laughs> yeah, right? <clears throat> this is an ugly belly button scar. <laughs> What well, causes belly buttons to be in or outy? Any or outies? Uh, I think that just has to do with like how the fucking umbilical cord is fucking how it falls off and shit. And how uh, you have off. You have an in or an outy. This is a question I should know, considering I've seen you naked. But you know, yeah, you, you've seen me. You've seen me <laughs> naked and shirtless multiple times, especially. Shirtless. Yeah, but I still don't know the answer to this question. I'm sorry. There's lots I, I was of topless. 
I, I was more busy looking at something else rather than your belly button. Something That's a little fair. bit lower. It's fair. But I've, I have, there's a lot of shirtless pictures of me on the internet. Most of them are not recent. Uh, but I have an innie. But it's not a very extreme innie. It's a very, it's a very subtle innie. I have a very extreme innie. <laughs> you have a cavern. <laughs> you could fuck it. You just have a fucking gut vagina on your <laughs> That is apparently a fetish that exists, is belly button fucking. I'm not surprised it exists, and I'm very- I'm, I'm grossed out, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> how do we start talking about belly- how- Why was I taught? Oh yeah, I asked you if you punched a tiger on the belly button, and that's how this all started. God damn it. Fucking... What a segue. Belly buttons are gross. They really are. Uh, you watch any cool anime lately, Will? Um, does the Mandalorian count? <laughs> nope. Denied. Fuck Disney. Anyway. uh, <laughs> Yeah, fuck Disney. Yeah. I like a lot of Disney shit, but, you know, fuck Disney anyway, though. For real. I saw a really, I saw a really funny meme of someone was, like, canceling their Disney Plus subscription. And it's like, why are you canceling? Your subscription has, like, all the normal things. Like, oh, can't afford it. No longer interested. Blah, blah, blah. Someone just tap. Will? Will, your dialogue has entirely cut out. God damn it, you fucker. On our professional podcast. Will, you fucking goddamn cock-ass fucking ass. I'm sorry, Mike. You fucking delinquent, you scoundrel, you goddamn fucking Holocaust-denying piece of shit. Anyway, as you're saying- about the Holocaust? Uh, nothing gone. (laughs) Um... Yeah, though. Isn't anyway, that my just con- like my controller biggest... shut off? Isn't that just like the biggest fucking like? That's such a random but fucking effective diss to just falsely accuse someone of fucking being a Holocaust denier. Because no matter what, immediately they're gonna have to stop what they're doing and be like, "Uh, oh, f- fucking w- what?" Or they're gonna be like, "Uh, no." Like you can't not go against that fucking accusation, or you're either you know. <laughs> Because if you just let that slide, people are just going to actually think you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Before I accuse you of any more heinous bullshit, uh, finish your meme that I saw already. Oh, um, a guy was canceling his Disney Plus, and it had all the normal options. And it said, other, the Mandalorian is over. This is the way. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you sent me that. But, uh, I watched... I mean, I've been watching a certain scientific, uh, no, wait, I watched, a, uh, I watched six episodes of a certain scientific railgun, and I've watched tw- 11, I think, episodes of A Certain Magical Index, which I put off watching, right? Because I looked at A Certain Magical Index, I looked at the description for the show, I looked at the character designs, and I thought to myself, man, this looks like some generic normie shonen bullshit. And I never watched it. I finally watched it. I kind of fucking love it. So, you know, that, that, that that's what I get for being a hipster piece of shit. <laughs> uh, I still haven't gone back to finish Shippuden, Nar- uh, Naruto Shippuden. I, I mean, that's what you, that, that's the correct decision. <laughs> to be I fair. mean, I want to. <clears throat> I just got, I'm, I'm like 51, 52 episodes in. They like just found Sasuke again. Um, yeah, they, they found the shittiest character in the show. Yeah, pretty much. Um, But... I just can't, I got tired of fucking dealing with Xbox's bullshit Microsoft Edge, which is basically the Xbox web browser. It's just Internet Explorer, but on a console. So it's infinitely worse. Wonderful. <laughs> At least uh, Internet Explorer functions. Vaguely, but yes. Dude, Internet Explorer saved my fucking ass one day okay i accidentally got a fucking super spooky virus on my pc one day and it was like the virus pretended to be a uh, virus prevention software ironically and what it did is it labeled every single solitary program as a potential virus and wouldn't let you access it because it's like no you can't do that you'll get a virus and then would lock you out of it including every single web browser on the computer and every single thing that let you access settings on the computer. So that means it just essentially was like bricking your computer so you couldn't, you, you, it, it stopped you from doing anything and you couldn't do anything to get rid of it. However, 
Internet Explorer is such an outdated piece of shit. This virus didn't even think to stop me from going to my out-of-date Internet Explorer. <laughs> so I was able to go through Internet Explorer and download shit to fucking get rid of the virus. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it saved my ass. So I keep an Internet Explorer. I let Internet Explorer stay, like, around forever now. Because I'm like, one day, I might fuck up and get that virus again. And that day, you will be there for me. <laughs> I remember on my old computer, I had this virus for something called uh, my PC backup, where it just kept it would just keep asking you to like, oh yeah, do this to go, to back up all the files on your PC in case something happens. And it was actually a virus. And I knew it was a virus, but I couldn't uninstall it because when you go to try and uninstall the file, it just says, uh, "Oh, this file is running. Please stop running this to uninstall," and it just wouldn't let you ever uninstall it because of that. Yeah. Um. But uh. I had to end up getting something. I had downloaded another software. I can't remember the name of it, but it was basically something that, like, force uninstalls shit. I got a fucking, uh, uh, not, not too long ago, day after Christmas, I bought a fucking Game Changer Wrestling pay-per-view. Uh, you, I try not to talk about wrestling too much on the show, because it's like, a pol- uh, pro wrestling is the red-headed stepchild of nerd culture. Uh, pro wrestling fans... For the most part, usually really into all a lot of other aspects of nerd culture. All other aspects of nerd culture usually don't like hearing about pro wrestling. <laughs> so it's it, it's kind of in a weird place. But uh you know, we're all You're over fucking the place. Nerd. You're all it's all over the place on this episode anyway, and I don't have any concrete topics anyway, so fuck it, I'm talking about fucking pro wrestling. Uh fuck you. Uh remember when we cha- were solely an anime podcast? That yeah. lasted all but, what, five episodes? It was a good five episodes. Fuck you. I, I, I mean, it was a good five episodes, but then the two episodes after were then the best episodes in the history of the podcast, so can I really say that was That's the fair. best? So I can't say that was our best decision. Well, my best decision. But, uh, <clears throat> what happened? Uh, it was a Game Changer Wrestling pay-per-view. It was uh, Jimmy All the Way. It was a Christmas special. The ropes were <laughs> painted like candy canes. Uh, uh, well, actually, it wasn't, like, painted. They had, like, candy cane colored duct tape, which they put across it. Because a lot of ring ropes That's are even just... better. Because a lot of fucking ring ropes, actually, uh, are just metal cables that have duct tape around them. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's hor- it, uh, that, that's why it, it's actually really pain, uh, painful for guys to run at them. Because they're just cables with duct tape sometimes. Uh, Game Changer Wrestling is sort of like the spiritual successor to ECW that CZW always wishes it was, but wasn't. <laughs> uh. uh it's it was fucking funny. The opening of the show, they were always, they, they were like talking about like, hey, do some drugs in the first two minutes of the show, and then one of the commentators, Joey Janela, was like, uh, by the way, if you do do drugs, uh, game changer wrestling, not responsible. Yeah. Immediately, fucking sold on this show and this company for the rest of time. Now for that, this fucking dude came out there. There's fucking like six dudes in this match. Two of them are. <laughs> I forget the name of this one fucker, but he's a fucking stoner character. His whole wrestling gimmick is that he's a stoner. Uh, he has long blonde hair and pot leaves on his tights. Uh, then the other guy, his gimmick is that he is also a stoner. <laughs> they have the same character. Except the other guy's name is The Grim Reefer, which is a way better name. <laughs> uh, the Grim fucking Reefer. Yes. And he's a wrestler. Uh, they're looking at each other. All the other guys are looking at him. The fucking uh, dude with the long blonde hair is like, everybody stop. Hold on. And then he fucking reaches into, like, either down his boot or tight or something. And he pulls out this, like, fucking sealed plastic bag. He can't, like, see what's in it. It's like, has a thick graphic on it. He pops it open. And he pulls out a fat fucking joint. <laughs> And a lighter. Oh my god. And he fucking lights it up in the middle of the ring. The whole fucking audience stands on their feet and is cheering like, fuck yeah! 
<laughs> By the way, this is in Philadelphia. To my knowledge, weed not legal unless it's medically. <laughs> this was not medically. <laughs> no, really? What what makes you say that? Uh the commentary team made lots of joke about their weed being medical though. Uh so the, he's fucking lighting it up, and everybody's, like, making fun of him because he's, like, it's taking him a second to get it properly lit. Uh, he fucking passes it to the fucking Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper takes a big fucking hit on it. Now, all the other wrestlers that were in this match and were wrestling stop what they're doing, walk over, and they form a fucking circle. <laughs> they're like, hey. Fucking Grim Reefer looks at him. He, like, offers it to a few of them. They're, like, wave, shaking their heads no, like, nah, nah. <laughs> we good. We good. And then there's this one huge fucking giant ch- chunky dude. He's fucking this big fucking dude. He's, like, not, like, all fat, though. It's, like, it's like when you have someone that's already kind of fat, but then they also get really ripped and athletic. So they're just, like, big. <laughs> Uh, Jesus. So he's like, look at him pissed, like, give me that shit. And they just keep passing it back and forth, and they won't give it to the big dude. I forget his name. It's three letters and starts with K. Uh, I'll fucking... Uh... I don't that, that, um, <laughs> It is not uh, what you're thinking. It's <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> three letters and it starts with K. It also ends with K. <laughs> Yeah, it means cock. <laughs> <laughs> it's guest there being out in the middle. But no, it's like KTB or something like that. I gotta fucking... Oh, fuck. Check my fucking phone. <laughs> I, have, I had everyone's... I had a poster of the show say it to my phone so I could learn these fuckers' names. Because this guy's great. It's fucking bad. I forget it when I'm talking about it. And I look fucking stupid. But, uh... Anyway... He's fucking mad because they're passing the joint to, to each other, but not him. He kicks one of them in the gut, takes the joint. The other guy's like, oh, for me? And then he kicks him, puts the joint in his mouth, grabs both of them, fucking runs to the rope, flips, then hits them both with an arm drag, throws everybody else out of the fucking ring, fucking jumps out the ring into a flip, lands on both of them, then takes the blood out of his mouth, and then exhales. <laughs> Still lit. Uh, <laughs> and then he hands it off into the crowd. <laughs> into the crowd? Oh, God. Uh, by the way, at one point, uh, Joey Janela was, like, jokingly looking at the crowd, he's like, uh, you guys, don't you do... He, he was, like, doing a bit about words, you know? It's like, uh, I know the word lit. The crowd is, like, yelling different words at me. He's like, yeah, I know tits. I know... I know, fuck. Uh, at one point, somebody yells drugs, and he's like, no, no drugs. Drugs are bad. Drugs. If drugs I catch bad, any of your kids doing drugs, I'm gonna take them, and I'm gonna go and turn them into the cops. <laughs> and then somebody in the crowd, uh, it's off camera, so I can't see it, but I'm assuming he's lighting up a fucking joint, because, you know, he's saying no drugs. What, what else would he be doing? He lights up a fucking joint. Joy Dill's like, no, dude, stop, for real. You're right under the smoke alarm. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to ruin the whole show. Oh, God, this is fucking awesome. (laughs) Just, no, stop. (laughs) He's like, please, no. Literally, just that is the one thing you're not supposed to fucking do. Okay, his name was KTB. That was the name of the people in this match. Was uh, KTB Steve Sanders was the other stoner, the Grim Reefer, Jonathan Wolf, and Treehouse Lee. <laughs> there was some My fuck Treehouse. Um, I was making fun of that too, but. When this match ended, and I was going on to Twitter to talk about it, one of the only names I fucking remembered was about the fucking Treehouse Lee. Because <laughs> when somebody comes out Fuck. and is named Treehouse, you don't forget that shit. You've got a point. Like, these guys are like, this is an indie show. This isn't like 
gonna be your AEW where you're like signed to a contract where this is the place you work. This guy is like could show up anywhere. So him making sure people remember his name is actually integral to making sure he has a job the next week. So <clears throat> I can't fucking blame him for having a goofy name like Treehouse because it got me to remember it. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like, oh, yeah, he's got some fucking intricate backstory of, like, he fucking, uh, he flying drop kicked a dude for, off of a fucking treehouse or some shit. You see, the or, thing about pro wrestling, or... the thing about pro wrestling and Lucha Libre, <clears throat> Will, is either you have a very intricate and overexpressive reason for some stupid bullshit you do, or... You're just doing a fuck all, and you're just a dude in tights, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't Fair give enough. a shit. Those no in between. You're just a fucking dude in tights with nothing but a catchphrase, or you're this fucking crazy dude in a clown suit that was fucking an escapee from an arson accident. Uh, fucking love wrestling, dude. It's so fucking stupid. I love it. <laughs> I literally, this is an example, when people say wrestling is like, I hate it when people say wrestling's a sport, that's fucking stupid. I hate it when people say wrestling isn't nerdy or isn't nerd culture, that's fucking stupid. Example one, uh, I just bought a book that says, my favorite wrestling matches in 2020 on it, with a fucking, like, a a layout inside, like, the match, what venue it happened in. Uh, notes on the match so I could keep track of all my fucking favorite matches this year so that way when I bitch about matches or talk to other fucking nerds on the internet I fucking have all this backlog of shit so I don't forget it (laughs) are you gonna tell me that's not peak fucking nerd shit right there when I am taking fucking notes so that way when I have intricate debates with other people I have more shit to look back on in case I forgot (laughs) You, my friend, are a fucking <laughs> Sorry. It's fucking peak nerd <laughs> shit. Okay, you look at a fucking wrestling fan, like a big wrestling fan, it's not like, oh yeah, you know, I have like one shirt. No, if you go to a fucking super big wrestling fan, like a guy that watches AEW and NXT and fucking I... New Japan, if you go to that guy, guarantee you, go to their wardrobe, pull the drawer, what do you see? 20 fucking wrestling shirts. Go to the next drawer, what do you see? Not pants. Guess what it is? 50 more fucking more wrestling, wrestling shirts. shirts. Guess bottom fucking drawer. What do you see? One pair of fucking dirty gym shorts and more fucking wrestling t-shirts. <laughs> because just like Ooh, any shit. other sector of nerddom, because one of the most fucking crucial like <sighs> themes in all nerddom is the obsession with like collect. It, it's it's very autistic, really. It's like <laughs> it's just the, like, like me. <laughs> it's like it's the obsession with collecting and knowing every single thing about a thing. It is like, oh, I don't just like Evangelion. I have an entire wall in my apartment covered in pictures of Evangelion. I have four figurines, one of which cost me 60 fucking dollars and was a bootleg. And I've seen the entire series, and I got the entire series except one film because it wasn't released in my fucking closet. (laughs) That sounds like some more fucking weeb shit. Yeah, so it's like, that's nerd shit. Like, Star Wars, it's not like, yeah, I just like Star Wars. No, it's, you have... 50 fucking Star Wars figures on your shelf. You got a fucking lightsaber. You got three shirts. You've watched every film 50 times on Blu-ray and DVD. It could tell me the difference. I have a life-size fuckable plush of Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, it's shit like that. In the fucking nerd shit. That is that is the difference between... You either... If you like something, you can like Star Wars. Like a normal fucking person. Where you're like, yeah, I saw it. I don't really remember... Much of, like, the first movies, I watched that a long time ago, and I was, like, 12, but, you know, saw the new one, it was fine, you know, kind of cool. Like that dude with the fucking, uh, big nose and the hair, I remember his name. Like, that's how a normal person watches a fucking Star Wars movie. 
<laughs> it's not like fucking nerd shit where it's like, yeah, I fucking, uh, I'm mad about this thing, okay? Because this thing fucking contradicts with the plot of this thing, and I'm pissed that they made these fucking movies because they decanonized the 3,000 books I read before they made this trilogy. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks is my waifu. <laughs> you know, and... It's funny because I'm using Star Wars as an example because I'm a huge fucking nerd, but I'm a casual with Star Wars. <laughs> but, uh... Fucking casual. You know, a fucking normal rest, a normal person might be like, yeah, I know Randy Orton, John Cena, Roman Reigns. I know those are people that are, that, 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 that wrestle, I guess, in the WWE show. <laughs> they already know, like, the name of, like... Monday Night Raw, it's like the, in, in that WWE stuff. Fucking, then you got me, and I'm like, ah, listen here. I'm gonna tell you the fucking backstory of the fucking political career of this hardcore wrestler in Japan in the 90s named Onita. Let me learn you a thing or two, boy And I'm just gonna act like this is fucking base knowledge shit you should know. And I'm gonna be confused when you don't know it. And then I got ten autographs in my fucking living room. That is the difference between normie shit and fucking nerd shit. You can enjoy anything. The next year... <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say, that reminds me of the topic of WWE. Um, you would know this. Yeah, I, I, I saw something that apparently at one point there was a custody battle decided by a ladder match. Yes, that is one of the most legendary fucking ladder matches, dude. Uh, what happened is Eddie Guerrero was feuding with uh, Rey Mysterio. And fucking at one point, Eddie Guerrero was doing this. Eddie Guerrero was the villain in this. He was the heel. So at one point, he was, like, during the feud, he was coming out with shirts that said, I'm your pappy. And he was telling Rey Mysterio that he's the real biological dad of his fucking kid and shit. <laughs> and it kept escalating to the point where, to decide who would be the real dad of this kid, they had a ladder match. <laughs> and whoever pulled down the fucking, like, certificate from the top of the ladder would own the kid. <laughs> and that's how Rey Mysterio <laughs> proved he was the father. I got to keep his kid. Want to know what the funnier thing about that is? What? Guess who just debuted in WWE a few months ago? Who? Rey Mysterio's grown adult fucking kid now. Uh. Rey Mysterio's fucking kid is now old enough that he that he he's like an adult and working with WWE. That's hilarious. It's funny because before we started this podcast, I was like, we're talking about pics I sent him and he's like, oh, this looks like something from WWE. And I'm just like real serious, right? Like, I'm just like, I don't watch fucking WWE. So it's probably for something else. Just really serious, <laughs> straight faced. Fucking one hour later, fast forward, we're sitting here I'm like, oh yeah, a few months ago in WWE. Because <laughs> <laughs> I watch, I watch, uh... Triple A, I watch uh, Lucha Libre Triple A, or Lucha Libre Triple A, depending how you want to pronounce it, whether you're using the English pronunciation or the Sp Spanish, Mexican pronunciation. Uh, uh, I watch occasionally CMLL, not often, occasionally I dip a toe in it. I watch Game Changer Wrestling, I watch New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I watch fucking uh, AEW, and once in a long while I might tune into NWA Power. Uh, those are what I watch. That's way more than a normal person should consume already. I do not watch WWE. <coughs> However, every single day, I check Twitter, because I have a fucking Twitter addiction, and I fucking see everything that happened in WWE that was worth talking about. Because everybody I follow... I think follow, you might have a problem. Because fucking... I have like 100 Twitter followers, and all of them follow me to talk about wrestling shit. And then I follow like 80 people, and like 70 of those people are there for me to talk to them about fucking wrestling shit. So it's like, this community, <laughs> wrestling Twitter is like this weird fucking community thing. <laughs> to where it's like, fuck, I talk to these people more than like some people I know IRL now, goddamn. <laughs> And then Jesus. I get and then I get into stupid fucking fights with dudes who tell me to kill myself because I disagree with them about fucking professional play fighting. 
how how dare you have a differing opinion about people going on stage and playing pretend? I fucking kill yourself, faggot. Literally, like, what the fuck, guys? You're not allowed to have a different opinion. If you disagree with me, you might as well be fucking just, just dead. Twitter is the most toxic app ever, but I fucking love it, and I shouldn't. I don't know, man. Tumblr is pretty fucking bad, too. And then again, I guess all the... So many people ditched Tumblr, though, after the porn yeah. ban, so... Yeah, that, that's, that's why I can confidently say Twitter, because fucking... <laughs> Tumblr's like, yeah, no porn. Uh, but, uh... Fucking, it's funny, right? Because technically Twitter says no porn too, but fucking people post porn on Twitter anyway. Oh, are you actually not supposed to post porn on Twitter? Technically, no. They just don't really... What about, uh... Yeah, they just don't fucking enforce it at all, it seems. Yeah, they just don't really try to enforce it. Because that's where all a lot of the fucking people I followed on Tumblr went to at, when that fucking ship sunk. They jumped over to Twitter. Yeah, they just don't really care. Uh, oh, here's some news you'll care about, actually. Uh, this is beautiful. This is funny. I mean, okay, it's like stuff you won't care about if I just describe the people involved, but you'll care about it because the result's hilarious. There's this fucking, um, imagine the ugliest meathead ever. He's hairy, bald, has like a grayish beard. Fucking ugly meathead named Lars Sullivan. Worked for WB for a while. Big monster dude. Got fucking suspended because he said some racist and homophobic shit on, an, on a fucking bodybuilding forum. <laughs> Which, first mistake, why the fuck are you using a fucking forum in fucking 2019? Uh, second mistake, fucking, why do you have to be fucking racist? Third mistake, you're fucking homophobic. Uh, anyway, and then he got also injured, so he's been out for a while. Uh, huh. People, uh, because the wrestling community is obsessive. Nerdy fuckwads uncovered <laughs> that earlier in Lars Sullivan's career, he went under a different name, which was Mitch. And while he was Mitch, he participated in several gay porno films. <laughs> oh. So this ugly motherfucker that was saying how he hates gay people in bodybuilder forums fucking did gay porn. <laughs> consensually get fucked <laughs> well then uh, it was fucking great I'll send you a picture of him he's fucking ugly as shit too <clears throat> my fucking tweet about it was literally just why out of all people from WWE that turned out to be a former gay porn star why did it have to be the ugliest fucker under their employment He's literally the ugliest fucking man in that company, and he's the one that did gay porn. It's fucking funny. That's including the old dudes. <laughs> oh, God. At least Shawn Michaels. If Shawn Michaels went with his old-ass fucking bald head and his old-ass wrinkly-ass ass, at least if he would have did gay porn, at least he would have a little charisma to back up his ugly ass. To make you think, okay, maybe... He's, <laughs> sure, he's ugly because he's old. But in terms of other old dudes, maybe he's not too bad. Because he at least has the charisma for it. But fucking Lars Sullivan. Fucking Mitch. Is the ugliest motherfucker. <laughs> oh, God. Damn. <laughs> oh. When did this podcast turn into the fucking roast of Lars Sullivan? <laughs> I don't know. Goddamn, Lars. You're fucking... <laughs> you can't... You're too ugly for gay porn. You're not fucking good enough as a wrestler for people to like you. You're not good enough at keeping your dumb mouth shut for WWE to push you as a big, unstoppable monster either. <laughs> that has two-minute matches. What the fuck are you good for? <laughs> God oh, damn. you know. I hope I hope at least at least the guy that was the bottom of that porn video had a good time. Like I hope 
He closed his eyes, and he thought of a more attractive man. And I hope that Lars Sullivan is, like, decent in bed when he's with another man. So that way, at least, like, the guy could pretend he was having good sex with someone that wasn't fucking uglier than a fucking big, fat flower pot full of ape shit. Hey. Uh. Why we gotta... Why gotta call him out like that? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see... I mean, I don't even know this man, but goddamn. <laughs> well, you see, usually... When you just insult somebody and their ability to do their job and you insult their looks when they really can't help it too much and you just bash a guy like that, which one, he can't help his looks because he's gotten uglier since the fucking porn video, so he can't help his fucking looks. Uh, but usually, saying the shit I said, roasting a dude like that that I don't know that's just trying to do his job, usually, that's a pretty shitty thing to do. Usually, that's a thing you probably shouldn't do, or it makes you an asshole. However, this guy is a fucking racist piece of shit, <laughs> and said homophobic shit <laughs> against gay people, even though he himself did gay porn. So guess what? Fuck you! <laughs> I you know what? See you no make moral, a fair point. Yeah, I see no moral Fuck dilemma. That. I see no moral dilemma in dissing the fuck out of and roasting the fuck out of a guy who's a racist piece of shit. And I'm gonna stand by that statement. <laughs> so, so what if he's actually? What if he's also secretly a black guy? <laughs> if he is secretly part black, this is gonna be the funniest fucking thing in the world. If he has, like, a fucking <laughs> secret great-grandmother from fucking, <laughs> from South Africa or something, this would be the greatest twist of my lifetime. This would be beautiful. <laughs> I saw people on Twitter joking about that, too. Dude, you know what would be funny? If the fucking gay, <laughs> if another gay fucking, more people find more gay porn of Lars Sullivan, and it's him <laughs> bottoming to a big ripped black dude. That would be the best shit. <laughs> uh, he joins. That would the be fucking, fucking hilarious. He joins the Hulk. Ho he joins the Hulk Hogan Club, aka the club of racist, ugly fuckwads who can't wrestle <laughs> and who have sex tapes. Yeah, and who have sex tapes. Yes. <laughs> I forgot Hogan's. Fucking racist shit came out in the sex tape. Fuck. Uh. Jesus. Why is it the ugly dudes that fucking release their fucking <laughs> sex tapes purposely? <laughs> Why is it like the fucking people that are like trying to keep that shit on the down low that are the attractive ones? Maybe, I guess that's why. Because they're ugly, so they gotta like fucking get that out there. <laughs> They need the confidence boost. People who are attractive with sex tapes don't always. I can't say that. If people who are attractive didn't need confidence boosts, then my life would be drastically different. I wouldn't have a fucking podcast. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And then all the porn I watch would be gone. <laughs> there would be a, there would be some a fucking trans woman in Texas right now. That wouldn't have nudes of an 18-year-old JW if I never needed a confidence boost. <laughs> God. <laughs> There's a lot of fucking Asian dudes that have fucking underage nudes of me <laughs> from high school out there because I needed a confidence boost. <laughs> when I turned 18, all my hot Asian dudes left. I don't know why. 18? No fucking hot gay Asian dudes felt like texting me anymore. I don't know why. <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> well, you see... Um... <laughs> yeah. Were you about to say something fucking terrible and you're like, shit, I shouldn't say that? <laughs> no, I wanted to say something snarky and witty. 
And then I immediately realized I'm not fucking smart enough for that shit. You were just purely hoping that by the time you finished that part of your sentence, you would have just already thought of something and had the perfect diss. Pretty much. I do that shit a lot. (laughs) There's a lot of sentences I have where I'm just like, eh, I could fucking wing this shit. And I just fucking figure I'll think of what I'm actually talking about halfway through my sentence. (laughs) Like, I got this, so we're gonna fucking, uh... We're just gonna, like, fucking, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, whatever the fuck, like, uh, you know, go over there, and, uh, you know, we're just gonna, like, hit up the fucking, uh... <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And it's it's funnier, because every time I say, uh, I usually say the fuck word, so... <laughs> I meant to say the F word, but I accidentally said the fuck word. <laughs> Uh, hey Will, you ever jam to the album Ghetto D, released in 1997 by Master P? Oh yeah, I listen to that shit all the time. What's your favorite song? Uh, Will. Yeah, Will. the one that goes, uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of songs actually, I'm not gonna I'll lie. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I never fucking heard of anything of what you just said. Want well, to know what the funnier thing is? What? Guess what the single from that album is. Fucking uh. Make him say uh. <laughs> 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 That's the single. Oh and my god. The refrain is make him say uh 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 na 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 na. You actually were saying Master P lyric when you were thinking. <laughs> you could have just played, if you would have just said, uh, yeah, that's my favorite one, uh, it's the song called that, then you would have been saying the most popular song from it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. The music video for that song, he came out in a gold tank. <laughs> This guy's fucking crazy. I love him. Oh my god. Will, you ever listen to the album Carnival of Carnage by the Insane Clown Posse? Is ICP even a thing still? Yes! Yes, it is. Do they still make music? Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> I, I remember the only, the only fucking things I know I remember about them at this point is that their fan base is called Juggalos. They really like Fago. And that they were featured in an episode of A Thousand Ways to Die. Because <laughs> uh, a dude died at a, th- at a, at a fucking ICP concert. I love that that's one of the ways. But, uh, fucking... <laughs> uh, Carnival of Carnage was Insane Clown Posse's first album released as the Insane Clown Posse. Before that, they were called the Inner City Posse. And then once they became the Insane Clown Posse, they released Carnival of Carnage, which was the first out of the first set of Joker's cards, which is a collection of albums that apparently can tell, apparently they tell a concise story. However, if you listen to the albums, they uh fucking don't. Ah. <laughs> uh. If you cherry pick one line from each album, it vaguely tells a story about life and dying, and going to heaven or hell, if you're really cherry-picking really fucking hard, and most of that is just what they said in the last album of the first Joker's cards. Huh. I see. Uh, come on. In Carnival Carnage, you have such wonderful lyrics like, I'm chillin', I'm illin', with my guts all over the ceiling. Fucking... A lyrical fucking masterpiece, dude. Come on, come on. Can't you see the beauty <laughs> in the song about getting down while your body is exploded and all over the bedroom? <laughs> hmm. ICP is fucking stupid, and I love them. Their music was yeah. better. Their music was stupid when they knew they were stupid. Uh, their fucking uh, last few albums have been pretty bland and lame. Uh, there's a few 
Uh, there's some few songs from, like, Mighty Death Pop and Bang Pow Booma that uh, I still fucking think are fine, but, you know. It's like, all these songs aren't, like, quality music, but all these songs are fucking entertaining. These guys are the junk food of rap music. You know it's fucking bad for you. You know you probably shouldn't be taking part in it, but goddamn do you fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, we got 30 seconds left, Will. Is there any other shit you want to say? <laughs> um, I would like to say that, uh, this new year... Oh, wait, Will, Will, I'm gonna Will, be... Will, what? fuck your new year, Will, cause, uh, like a fetus, I'm abort my way out of here. Bye, bitches, happy 2020! <laughs>